proceed as I could be anyone telling you anything. I thought, because we're dealing with this issue, maybe I should explain a bit more about myself in this clip. Now, if you see my YouTube channel, you will see I've done different presentations of things like Kabbalah, practical Kabbalah, Satanism, as in theistic Satanism, and other things that can be the of the occult, but maybe you haven't. So I want to give you a rundown on the experience I've had in the occult esoteric world. Because, you know, people can say, look at this guy, he's slagging off at the Urantia book. He, why, how would he know? And the thing that draws me into target the Urantia book is that I recognise a lot of the things that I had been involved with in that book. I believe the book, and this is interesting, the book was put together over a 20 or 25 year period, supposedly by a type of channeling. And, you know, I will get around to that trip. But I want you to have an idea of why I speak about this in such a manner. I call the Urantia book post-Gnostic. But the more I look at it, the more and more I see a globalist uh, car system. So this, this is why I'm speaking about it, because I see it being implemented this day and age. But more about me. Okay, now I was a member of the Rosicrucian Order, otherwise known as a Mork. Can I prove this? How's that? Now... You may want to see my name and my membership number. You want my name and number? You better be good looking and not a pufter. But uh, it's not just a card. I've got you know, this is from the Rosicrucian Order. They are uh, uh, contact you by correspondence said so like that and more and more and more and more I've got a fair whack of these so I am not bullshitting when I said I was with the Rosicrucian movement or a mock but it was it wasn't really my thing although it's interesting to read, you know, the manuscripts I did, but at the time I was a theistic Satanist and I wanted whiz-bang stuff in terms of the occult. Ah, uh, what else? Had a brief fling with voodoo. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Think about voodoo, it doesn't take much to get the Loires involved with you. So, I'm just saying what I have been experienced in. Not saying I'm an expert, but I've been involved in this. Okay, next. Enochian magic. 
Now, if you look uh, at the likes of the Eurasia book and Oaspe book, you will see complicated names, you know. Enochian is a language of its own accord. Myself, I found it overly complicated. Though I can see with the millions, billions, trillions of universes and all of their individual gods, I'm guessing the ideas came from that. Uh, the next one, Donald Craig, Donald Michael Craig. Interested to read, not really my thing, but interested, you know, or you got to be open-minded with uh, writings and theories, but they have to be practical. Next, Planetary Magic, interesting. So, if you do Kabbalah, you should know about the planetary aspects anyway. And some people prefer the pagan entities in regards to that magic. But, uh, was this the first one? No. Anyway, this is something that got me onto Kabbalah. Not bad. But this is the key one, my treasure. You need one of those if you're going to practice practical Kabbalah. The first occult book I got was The Sacred Magic of Abramelin, which, interestingly enough, deems Satan and Lucifer to be two separate entities. So, this is where I think the Eurasia book crowd got their uh, theology from. The thing I have found, you know, more or less, is that occult systems have a, have an ancient Egyptian undertone to them. So we've got the Kabbalah. Now Moses, from whom the magic practices relating to the Kabbalah come from, grew up as an Egyptian prince, so he would have had some occult knowledge before he started doing magic you know, from, or directly ordained by God, but it's from those practices, you know, open the Red Sea and stuff like that, which people try to replicate. But still, yeah, there is, actually is an Egyptian Kabbalah, which is never really talked about. People say, oh, it's all Jewish and blah, blah, blah. But that's just one part. You got the Rosicrucian movement. When you first get involved, you don't really notice things. But as you go on further in the teachings, it does take an ancient Egyptian uh, bent or undertone, and it's quite obvious. Enochian magic. They bring in Egyptian deities as well. And we, like I said, you go through the various magical aspects of different systems. You will either find they come from an ancient Egyptian background or they've been added onto it. So, Rosicrucians, Enochians, and you can throw in, throw Kabbalah to an extent, but not as pressing, but also 
considering we're talking about the Urantia book, 1930s, that's when the, first, the writings first started occurring, but it wasn't published until 1955. So like I said, 20, 25 years to cook this up. You also had Alistair Crowley, and he's the one who put together Philema, ancient Egyptian magic that somehow incorporated yoga. But that is the background. Now, concerning those who were behind the Urantia book, really there's only one person, and that's William Samuel Sadler. Now, you know, you could say it's a superstition or something, but, you know, I used to be a fiestic Satanist, and like Pufters have Gaydar, Satanists have something similar. It's like, ah, I know you're like me. I don't get a rating from this guy. Just, just something doesn't come across that way. The, I think he based his writings on a branch of Gnosticism which holds that Jehovah is evil. I can't figure it out either because it's not true. And that uh, Jesus Christ isn't really Jesus Christ but is the Archangel Michael like in the Jehovah's Witnesses. But he's rewritten it because it's so vague. The entire book is just one vague paragraph following another. You may have names dropped and you might try and find equivalents but they don't say yes, they don't say no. And it's subject to individual interpretation at any given time. And actually, you know, from a Urantia book forum, there was a claim that, you know, the Psalms we have in our Bible, you know, there's about 150, or 151, depending, there's, because one Bible is orthodox, one isn't. The claim is that at least 13 of those Psalms were written by King Tut's father-in-law. That is a Urantia book adherent claim. And supposedly he wrote 147, but I don't know, they're either deleted or the church stole them or And the more I read about the Urantia book, the more I see William Sadler as a type of Gnostic, but a politically motivated one. Should we remember, 1930s, you had the Western world recovering after the Wall Street crash. You had the League of Nations, which barely held together. But they were pushing for a world government with basically a world economy, much like we have now. So, this guy was reasonably well off from what I understand. He was a doctor and he was also an amateur psychiatrist, self-taught. Plus, he had a wife who is pretty much the mirror image of Margaret Sanger, the one who brought forth Planned Parenthood. 
and they, both women, and probably Sadler himself, or William Sadler, because you know, his wife's called Lena Sadler, they were hev heavily into eugenics and abortion. So, no, is it fair to say these people had some sort of religious uh, impetus in pushing these things forward? You, the closest thing is a type of Gnosticism, which is satanic, but I'll get on to that next clip. <laughs> 